authority to the public regarding the continued commitment of all Florida sheriffs statewide to work cooperatively with the federal government and reiterate their commitment to the public safety of the communities they serve. He is accompanied by Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gultieri, FSA Legislative Chair, who will offer comments. Alachua County Sheriff Sadie Darnell, immediate past president, who will provide remarks. Osceola County Sheriff Russ Gibson, Marion County Sheriff Billy Woods, representing Citrus County Sheriff Mike Prendergast, Commander Buddy Grant, and Captain, and Captain Dave Vinson, and FSA Legal Counsel, Mr. Wayne Evans. Sheriff Demings. Thank you, uh, Captain Nieves, and uh, thank you to all of you for once again coming to uh, join us today to discuss uh, important issues of Im immigration enforcement as it relates to uh, sheriffs here within Florida. Uh, again, I recognize uh, my colleagues from throughout the state who have come to participate in this uh, dialogue as well. As the president of the Florida Sheriff's Association, uh, I am honored to represent the, the sheriffs from throughout Florida. Together, we are challenging uh, the accuracy of a weekly list published by the Department of Homeland Security. The list is uh, referred to as the decline, the weekly decline detainer outcome report, which uh, typically lags about six weeks in terms of uh, its um, uh, most recent updates. This list is of sheriff's offices that are alleged to be not cooperating with immigration and customs enforcement. We are frustrated with the unwillingness of DHS to work with the local sheriffs, uh, really from throughout Florida as well as throughout the nation, uh, within the constraints of federal case law so we can be sure our nation's laws are being legally enforced. At the heart of the issue is the ICE detainer form. Uh, courts view this form as having no legal authority to hold an inmate, yet the DHS wants sheriffs to comply with the detainers. We have requested ICE provide us with judicial orders or warrants in order for the detainers to provide lawful authority under state and federal law. However, uh, sheriffs, uh, if sheriffs fail to comply with the detainer, DHS is labeling uh, the agency as non-cooperative and hence they end up on this list of the weekly decline detainer outcome report. Uh, this is simply unacceptable and important enough uh, that we had to address this issue today. Uh, at the very least, it's a public perception uh, nightmare for sheriffs across uh, the country. We support and cooperate with ICE in their efforts to identify and deport uh, criminal aliens. However, we also swear on the oath to protect, support, and defend the U.S. Constitution, and that really is what we as sheriffs intend to do. We are here to serve our communities and our country and are simply asking for enhanced information sharing between federal, state, and local law enforcement regarding illegal immigrants. At this time, I'm going to ask the chair of the Florida Sheriff's uh, Legislative Subcommittee, uh, the Pinellas County Sheriff, Sheriff uh, Bob Gualtieri, to come forward and to offer comments. Uh, he will be followed by, again, Alachua County Sheriff, Sadie Darnell, uh, whose county is listed on uh, this weekly uh, report. Uh, Sheriff Gualtieri. Thank you, Sheriff Demings, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. I want to <coughs> stress that our goal and desire is to have full cooperation with the Department of Homeland Security and ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, because I believe, and I believe most sheriffs do, uh, that those people that are in our country illegally and who are committing crimes should be subject to deportation proceedings. So this is not a philosophical difference uh, for the most part uh, between sheriffs and the federal government. This is a difference in that sheriffs have to follow the law and that we're being asked to do something by the federal government that at least nine, nine federal courts across this country have said we can't do. And so we wanna cooperate. We don't want people in the country that are wreaking havoc in the community, that are committing serious crimes, that are causing citizens to be victims. 
But at the same time, again, we have to follow the law. Now, the landscape is this, is that, and this is the state of it today, is that ICE issues what they call detainers, and these detainers go to jails. And these detainers, everybody agrees, are no more than an ask. They're not a mandate, they are an ask of ICE to the sheriff to notify ICE if the person who was brought into the jail on a charge, let's say a burglary charge, <clears throat> when that person is due to be released that we tell them so that they can come and get them. But here's the kicker with it, is they say is, is that if we don't come at the time and the date the person's to be released on that state charge, hold them for 48 hours. And so what we say is, is that we can't because there's no legal authority to hold them on this quote detainer, which is no more than an ask. It's holding somebody in an arrest status it's holding somebody at a time and a place where their Fourth Amendment rights are implicated. And if we're holding them without any type of lawful basis, then we're violating their rights. And 100% of the time in this context, 100% of the time, it's all civil. In immigration law, there is criminal and there's civil. This is all civil. So they're asking us under the detainer program to hold these people and about two weeks ago, they came out with what they said was a solution. Great, we all like solutions, we all wanna work together. And they said, we're gonna accompany and attach to this detainer form, we're gonna attach a warrant. Well, the problem with that warrant that they are attaching to the detainer form, it's a warrant that we cannot serve under the law. Under the law, it says that warrant, which they call an I-200 or an I-205 form, and I've got one here in front of me, is it says on there specifically who can serve it, and it is not us. So they're asking us to hold somebody under this ask for up to 48 hours after their state charges have been resolved, when we have no lawful basis to do it, and they say, well, here's a warrant, but the warrant's not one that we can serve. And again, there are nine, nine federal courts in this country, and every single court that has considered this issue has said to the sheriffs and said to the jails, you can't do what they're asking you to do. It's unlawful, you're violating their rights, their constitutional and civil rights violations, and you have to pay. Some of the judgments against the sheriffs have been over six-figure judgments for doing what ICE and Homeland Security is asking them to do. And so the response today, after we have those nine federal cases, not one court has supported this premise, is now they're putting out this report weekly identifying sheriffs in table three, table of jurisdictions that have enacted policies that limit cooperation with ICE. And every one of those jurisdictions, when it's listed for the reason, is saying they can't honor the detainer because the law doesn't allow it. And it's simply not fair. It's not fair to report to the public and purport that sheriffs are being uncooperative, sheriffs want to let people who are committing crimes who are here illegally out because we don't. We want good public safety. We want good public policy. We want to make sure that those people who shouldn't be here are given to the federal government so they can do their job. Another big point of misperception on a number of uh, individuals' parts is sheriffs have no authority, no jurisdiction at all to enforce immigration law. In, in immigration enforcement is 100% totally within the province of the federal government. We have no jurisdiction. Somebody can walk in this door right now and walk up to me and say I'm here illegally, there's nothing I can do about it because I have no jurisdiction over it. And the most that we can do, and I believe we should do, is to cooperate with ICE. But we have to cooperate with ICE within the confines of the law and what the courts have said we can and can't do. Now we want to work with ICE, we want to work with the Department of Homeland Security for a solution to this, I believe there are solutions, but in the meantime, is that we ask the Department of Homeland Security to stop issuing this report and stop misrepresenting to the public, to the citizens, that you have sheriffs that are not cooperating with them. We're not cooperating the way they want because the courts have told us we cannot do what they are asking us to do. We're following the law. We're doing the right thing. We want solutions to this, but at the same time, we don't want to be put on these lists with a misrepresentation of non-cooperation when we are fully cooperating to the extent that's permissible. So it is frustrating, it is upsetting. And this is why we wanna make sure that the public knows that we, 
and the sheriffs of Florida are 100% cooperative to the extent that the law permits. We want a solution to this, but continuing this report is not a solution. And visiting sheriffs of Florida and knocking on the doors of sheriff's offices and telling sheriffs, if you don't honor these detainers, we're going to put you on this report is not the way to do business, and that should stop. Good afternoon. The sheriffs in the state of Florida and throughout our nation are caught in a trick bag. You've heard some very logical statements made by Sheriff Gualteri and Sheriff Demings about this situation. The report that's been coming out is misleading. Uh, I received, my county and I received a great deal of no notoriety. We, we were listed on the, on the first report that came out. I can't tell you why. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, the best I could come up with, it was alphabetical for the state of Florida, but there's certainly no reason to it. And we have asked repeatedly for someone from the, the federal side to explain to us how the, the report is compiled, on what basis, what criteria is being used. And none of that explanation has been given to us. Uh, the the uh, implication that Alachua County and the other uh, counties that are listed uh, throughout the nation on the list are not co uh, cooperating with ICE or, or Homeland Security, that is simply not the case, at least from the state of Florida. I have been cooperating, I've been uh, managing the jail in Alachua County under contract with the Board of County Commission for over 10 years. Ever since uh, I've been sheriff for over 10 years, I've cooperated with ICE, and when people who are booked into my jail are foreign born, they're not born in this country, we notify ICE on a regular and consistent basis. We give them the release date of that inmate. If they have, based upon their database or whatever they use, have some reason to have them uh, detained, they do issue a request. As has been stated repeatedly, that is simply a request. It is not a probable cause criminal warrant on which I have authority to issue. So when the person, if they've committed a crime and, and they reach the, the time uh, based upon the judge to be released from the jail on either state or local charges, that person is rele released. For the four people that have been listed on the report, the four detainers, they are still in the Alachua County Jail. Uh, but the main point and the most important point is we do cooperate, we notify ICE, but there is a, a, a lack of understanding, and I consider the list to be a smart list. It represents sheriffs who know the law, who have very good counsel, who are advising us to not break the law. We're about due process, we're using due care to make sure that we stay within the limits of our responsibility and our authority. What has been put out uh, is, is absolutely misleading. We are very frustrated. I hope you can sense our frustration because it's misleading to the public. We are standing strong from the standpoint of knowing the law and we're adhering to the constitutional rights. We're not gonna seize someone, a human being, unless we have probable cause to do so under criminal law or authority to do so under civil law. Thank you. Okay, you've heard from uh, several sheriffs now at this point. I, I do want to point out that we do have general counsel, uh, Ms. Wayne Evans here, who represents the uh, Florida Sheriff's Association ha and has done significant research in this area of law and has uh, provided opinions to uh, sheriffs who uh, operate and manage uh, jails throughout Florida uh, to uh, advise them that uh, the dilemma of what we are for facing uh, today. So at this point, let me uh, open it up for questions from uh, any of you. Well, I do believe that it is going to require uh, the leadership within the Department of Homeland Security to sit down with sheriffs uh, and their representatives to come up with uh, a meaningful solution. Sheriff Gartieri, uh this past week uh, met with uh, major county sheriffs from throughout the country uh, with representatives, uh, senior management representatives from DHS and from the uh, current administration. And uh, I'll uh, let him uh, come forward at this point and share with you uh, some of the outcome of that discussion. Uh, we are still very open to continued dialogue to find meaningful solutions uh, for sheriffs. Uh, Sheriff Gautier.
currently when when sheriffs uh, or deputy sheriffs or law enforcement officers in general uh, encounter individuals uh, during the normal course of their business uh, we do not have access to uh, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement database uh, which indicates whether an individual is here lawfully or unlawfully. That's not something that we have ready access to today. But I'm going to ask uh, Sheriff Gautier to come forward and, and uh, respond to your question as well. So I had an opportunity uh, last week uh, to meet in Washington with the acting uh, undersecretary at DHS along with a lot of other uh, sheriffs and police chiefs from around the country. It was a great opportunity to have a, a candid and direct discussion um, about the issues and the concerns. I think it was a very productive discussion. And we had um, some talks uh, about getting uh, groups together uh, from within the various associations along with the lawyers at DHS and, and trying to brainstorm and come up with uh, a good way to resolve this that meets everybody's needs. And, and, and I believe that there are ways that this can be resolved. Um, and I hope that uh, that meeting will result in a future meeting where we can sit down at the table uh, with a lot of good people who are well intended and really want to just get to the end game and get to a finish line with it. So I hope that's the result that comes out of it. Uh, it's very detailed. Immigration law is very complex. Uh, there's a lot of nuances to it. Uh, but I think that uh, there are solutions. There was a case that was argued this morning, and I watched the oral arguments, arguments on it before the Massachusetts Supreme Court. And uh, there was a lot of lengthy argument uh, before those justices on this issue. Uh, looking forward to see what the results of that are, but um, I think there are solutions in the meantime. Uh, again, we've got nine courts that have already ruled on this. So I think that the focus should be on how do we get where we want to be, which is cooperating with ICE and recognizing their limited resources. You know, if ICE had greater resources, uh, then we may not be here either because they need our help and we want to help them, again, within the law. So I think that um, there are some ways that we might be able to uh, put some policies in place um, and work through. One of the options is a cooperative agreement between the jails and the Department of Justice. And I suggested that actually uh, in this meeting last week. And so. Um, I'm interested in pursuing that with them and seeing if that's an idea that they're receptive to. Uh, but it, we just got to brainstorm it. And, but in the meantime, continuing to point the finger at us is not solving anything. And we really need that to stop so we can get to some productive uh, discussion with it. But remember, remember on your question, remember is, is that local law enforcement has no jurisdiction for immigration enforcement. We have no access to the ICE database. And like I said, if somebody walks in this room right now, or if I leave here and get back to Pinellas County and do a traffic stop or whatever it is, and somebody comes up to me and they are illegal, and they're here in this country illegally, there's nothing I can do about it. So we don't enforce immigration law. Our role is to help ICE the best we can within the confines, but we are not immigration agents. And no, and here's why, because I'm not going to do what they're asking me to do that nine courts have been held illegally. And so the only way I can tell you for us and for I think all the sheriffs that are standing here and probably all the sheriffs in Florida, the only way you're going to get in court on it is if you do what they're asking you to do because you're going to get yourself in a jam and you're going to get sued and you're going to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in liability and the taxpayers are the ones that are going to have to fit that bill. And so. No, is that you know just because they ask and just because they're saying and just because they argue that it's right. Well, the problem with their argument is is you got nine federal courts that have said, "Look, guys, you don't have it right. You're wrong on this." And so, you know, what my suggestion is is let's stop talking about who's right and who's wrong, and let's get to a point where we can sit down and brainstorm it and uh, come up with a solution. So. Uh, that's the only way it's going to get you know back in court is if there's another wrong that's done and that means somebody is honoring one of these and then they get sued for it. I 
I kind of briefly touched on it initially and during my opening comments. Uh, by the time that the reports come out, they lag by about six weeks. Uh, here in Orange County, I think most of you know that uh, as sheriff, I'm one of the unique sheriffs in Florida uh, that does not run or manage the jail. The jail here is managed under the auspices of the Board of County Commission, and as such, uh, within that framework, they make decisions on behalf of the jail. And so, yes, it's possible not just uh, Orange County could find themselves on the list, uh, um, but other counties uh, in Florida potentially are, are going to end up on the list. And I believe the most recent report that I saw uh, included uh, St. Lucie County, uh, and Hernando County in addition to Alachua County. So there were three counties. Uh, I understand that there have been some recent uh, dialogue with uh, Santa Rosa County uh, regarding some issues that they encountered and perhaps when the next report comes out, they may very well be uh, on that list as well. Okay, uh, thank you all very much for being here this afternoon.